Is AWS really as complicated as it seems? Well, with over 200 services, it can feel overwhelming. That's why developers turn to third-party tools that promise simplicity. But then they end up with web apps scattered across multiple platforms, messy and difficult to maintain. Most developers don't realize you only need 3% of AWS to launch powerful web apps. Forget the other 97% and AWS becomes much simpler. In this video, I'll show you the five AWS services that matter. Many of us use tools like Dropbox or Google Drive to back up personal files remotely. In a similar way, web apps also need to store images, videos, or documents for users to access. For example, I built this thumbnail comparison tool that lets users upload a thumbnail image. Where do the files go? Straight into our first AWS service, S3. S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. You start by creating what's called an S3 bucket. It's a container for related files. Every time I select a thumbnail image, my app sends a post request to an S3 upload URL, and a file appears in my thumbnail bucket. The files stored in S3 are called objects. These objects can be public or private depending on how you configure the bucket, but for public buckets like this one, objects can be accessed through their object URL, which is how my browser is loading images directly from S3. And you can use S3 in the same way for other website assets like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But S3 only stores files. It doesn't run code or make decisions. So what if you wanted this button to take a screenshot of how this video would look on YouTube? Well, that's where our next service comes in. Often web apps need to run back-end code for things like image processing or reading from a database. But instead of running your own server 24-7, there's a cheaper and simpler option, AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda runs code written in any of seven programming languages. You just upload a function to AWS, then execute it manually, or automatically in response to an event. For example, I wrote this JavaScript function to generate a screenshot for my thumbnail tool. Once it's deployed to Lambda, I can trigger any time, like when I hit this button. The function executes and returns an image. The best thing is I only pay for the time the function runs, which is cheaper than keeping a server online, especially for smaller apps. But how does clicking a button in the UI actually run the backend function? That missing link is handled by our next AWS service. When you interact with a web app, the browser talks to the backend through an API. It normally sends GET requests to load data and POST or PUT requests to save it. But deploying your own server just to handle these incoming API calls is a pain. That's where API Gateway comes in. API Gateway acts as the entry point to your backend, receiving requests from your front end and forwarding them to an AWS Lambda function. Lambda runs your backend code and returns a response with a specific status. For example, when I click the screenshot button, my browser sends a post request to an API endpoint. The endpoint is managed by API Gateway, which passes the request to the Lambda function you saw earlier. And the function returns a 200 OK with a response body linking to my screenshot image. API Gateway scales automatically to 10,000 requests per second without you having to manage any infrastructure. The only catch is your API runs in a specific region. Mine's hosted in the US, so if someone from the UK sends an API request, it has to travel across the Atlantic and back, which adds latency. To fix that, our next AWS service helps your web app load fast, no matter where in the world your users are. The problem with accessing a web app across the internet is that your request can travel through any of millions of network links. Some fast, some painfully slow. For the best experience, your app should be served from a server physically close to the user, not one on the other side of the world. That's exactly what a CDN, Content Distribution Network, is for. AWS offers a CDN called CloudFront. CloudFront has over 400 edge locations, data centers positioned around the world, close to where users actually are. When someone visits your site, the request goes to the nearest edge location. CloudFront then routes it to the right place, whether an S3 bucket, API gateway endpoint, or something else. 
If that destination is far away, CloudFront can cache the response so future users get an instant reply. For example, when you access my thumbnail tool, everything goes through CloudFront. The API call to take a screenshot returns a response with a CloudFront header with no caching. But when my browser loads this JavaScript file, you'll see the response is cached. That's all controlled through my CloudFront configuration. Even when CloudFront isn't caching, data travels through AWS's private global network. And that's significantly faster than the public internet. So now our web app is ready to go global, but there's still one thing missing, a way to store data long term. And that's where our final AWS service comes in. Most web apps rely on saving and loading user data, like profile settings, saved items, or recent activity. Usually this data lives in a database, but traditional SQL databases can get expensive because they need a server running 24-7, even when no one's using your app. That's the exact problem AWS's DynamoDB service solves. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database without any servers to manage. AWS handle the infrastructure, and you just pay for what you use – reads, writes, and storage. NoSQL databases like DynamoDB are great for storing key-value pairs. They're fast and scalable, but they don't support relational queries like traditional databases. Still, for many web apps, DynamoDB is ideal, especially if you want to keep costs down. Take my thumbnail tool, for example. It uses this DynamoDB table to store a collection of thumbnails. When a user updates a title, the browser sends an API request, it triggers a Lambda function, which updates the relevant record in the database. The best thing about DynamoDB is it comes with free monthly credits. I run multiple low traffic web apps and my monthly bill for this service is just a few cents. When you realize everything you need to deploy a low cost, scalable web app exists in just five AWS services, it makes you question all those third party tools. Building inside AWS simplifies a lot and it's how I built and launched four web apps in 300 days. Once you've nailed the basics, you might be surprised by what you can create. See you in the next one.